Hello, Professor. Hello, everyone. Here, my um, I'm going to share my screen to show a demo of the project. Oh, yeah. So this is still converting the recording. Yep. So here, um, as I um, was saying in the last uh, code walkthrough, there are three parts. One is the factomic data input. One is the source data input, that's UFIR on the source code program. And the third one is the actual display of the data in the graphical database. You know, the, this part is still uh, being done, but I wanna show the code that went through. So um, also I wanna show, um, yes, the graphical databases part. So um, if we, so what I've done is I've, I've given a subcontext um, for, uh, for the Bible. So it goes subtype, book, book as chapter, chapter as subconscious, verse, line, part. So how do we see that graphically? So I'm going to show that. And we're going to see that. Perfect. And here is the graphical database, you know? So I'm going to just say subcontext. And um, perfect. So here you have um, the, um, all the subcontexts, all the relationships that have subcontexts. So what I'm going to focus uh, the attention, your attention to is S1, which is uh, what we want. And then um, we'll just lock it in here and lock these away. <laughs> yeah, we have to just lock these, otherwise they'll be moving around. Um, so once we have it, we can display it. Now, this is the actual uh, Neo4j browser that holds the data, but um, I'm designing a way that will give it angle angles, you know, so it, it will be in a very structured form. It won't be dangling, but for right now, um, all the data is uh, currently like this, you know, because uh, that requires a little more extensive programming, you know? So here we have X, X, S1 as a source. It has a subcontext testament. It has a book which has a chapter, which has a verse. And then if you break this out, if you open it, we have one, it has one, and that has a testament, you know? So a testament will be connected to one, and this one will later have um, a book, you know? Um, just to say, um, just save the previous one. Okay, right. Now we have um, book chapter verse and to the verse, we're going to connect two of um, of uh, two new subcontexts. You know, one is a line and the line has a word. So that's how it's going to be displayed, you know? So it's no longer rows and tables. Everything is displayed as the graphs and edges. And you see that each of these nodes is again connected to other uh, nodes and you, and it, it, they describe each node, you know? For example, the number one is also a number, which we all know. And even number is a noun, you know? And each book is also a noun. So that's how um, uh, all these are interconnected, you know? And um, here are the small, um, uh, small uh, other uh, nodes and variants that I created. And if we wanna, um, so, th so that's the display, but the power of this display actually is in the way we search for data. The search is so specific and um, the amount of, uh, because of the relationships, the amount of uh, information it brings about is, is very rich, you know, because there's so many relationships here, but this is the structure of a source. And finally we'll have data. And for example, if you want to create a movie, we'll just have a P1 as a movie or M1 as a movie. And the subcontext will be directly a word, you know, it will be a word. And that, and everything is just a string. The data is just a string. Whereas if you have a line and verse, you have words that are the subcontext and then the alphabet. So we're going straight to the alphabet for a movie. And um, if it's an image, also it'll go straight to alphabets. And if it's a DNA, also it goes straight to alphabets, you know? So the data is very precise. And now we're coming to the display of the data. So we have uh, uh, the display and here we have, um, we have 
uh, the 3GS. So this is the display of, uh, with um, 3D programming. So this it it shows you you know how um, the size you know of planets and uh, it and uh, these are the objects and then it's the universe of the programming you know and then here is how we're going to put data in. We're going to put data categorized in boxes. So uh, this is the another stage of the programming. Here's another rendering. And then uh, yeah, we can display it in the sky. We can display it in um, in any any uh, um, universe, actually. We can display the data, yeah, um, the sky in the clouds in a building. And here's the actual data itself. Let me re refresh this. Yes, OK. So all these nodes and edges get split up like this. So if you look at a table, like a select star from an Oracle table, it's all displayed in, in, in 1D, you know, in just one dimension. Uh, you can say two dimensions, but, but that's it. It's just one plane and the data comes in simply. But here, for each node and each of this represents a form of data. Then here you have another one, you have the other rendering. And here you can actually uh, move it and you can put your mouse near the data, you know, and it'll tell you the object's name as you put your um, pointer near the data. And now here you have another. So this is the best. This is the best rendering. So even the edges have a color, you know, so the color tells us perfect thing about the data. And also what I'm planning to do is add angles. So if it's talking about subcontext, it will be at zero degrees, you know? And if you're talking about is uh, something or it has a, it has an object the has an object will be at 15 degrees you know and 15 degrees down and then if you have then you have all the data and all the data is at 90 degree is at um, um, yeah 90 degrees you know so if we can display like that we have solved a big puzzle because right now there's no program that does it there's absolutely no program so it's very intricate when we come to this part of programming you know? so that's what I'm working on to have a very good rendering. But um, that's the scope of a programming one to store data in, in the factomic scale. And that's showed here in the atomic scale two and uh, two is to also insert the source. So you have a whole context of source. So there's a second part. And the third part is to render it in the best way possible and possibly with the cinematic experience. If we can, uh, if we can display that extremely organized um, with boxes. So even you can, we can have a house, you know, we can have a house to show the cinematic experience, you know, um, that would be a very complete, you know. So um, that's the scope of my programming. And um, um, there are, um, actually the programming is uh, very deep and you can see here the node labels and you can see the, edge, the edges. So I do have even, like, all these are like, um, uh, parts of speech, subcontext directory, but you have farther off. Now you can show you some examples. See, uh, Ab Adam is the father of Abel. You know, it's such a simple thing, but there's so much value in that. And there's so many laws here. And you can see how Abel is connected to so many other nodes. And you have Adam, and Adam will be connected to a ton of nodes, you know? So see, look at that. He's a son, Adam, son of Seth. So Adam has another son, Seth. Cain is a son of Adam, see? And Eve is a wife of Adam. So these relationships are very important, especially when we talk about graphical databases. And also Twitter uses this to connect its nodes. So it uses Neo4j database, but, um, in the browser is very raw if you see this browser so there's no angles and you see all these things floating about you know and so uh, the display is um, quite inadequate you know and um, there are many ways uh, to uh, to see the data um, you can see the data with respect to one node so if i execute this it's is one node yeah it starts with this and it and asks for p1 so we can go to this and well, we can just focus attention on just this uh, S1 and, and uh, Testament, you know? And um, that's because each node actually has tons of data. It's like an entire universe, you know? And uh, you can also see data in row format. If you don't want to see it graphical, you can see it in rows also, which is, this is the standard 
uh, database uh, way, relational database way, and you can see it in text also. And uh, you'll see all the nodes, but uh, this is not that useful for us. And if you look at code, yeah, you'll see this, uh, how it accepts the code. But here we want to be as graphical as possible, you know? So that's the whole purpose of graphical database. We're a database. So with this, I thank you, uh, everyone who's watching. Thank you, Professor, for giving me this opportunity. Have a nice day. Bye.